that easy. Warning. A small coffee shop in Kennesaw is going from a struggle to stay open to expanding. It's one of almost a half a million small businesses that applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. $75 billion in COVID relief money. Those funds were set aside for the hardest hit mom and pop businesses. As Caitlin Ross reports, the financial support means this business can help more people now with special needs. The employees at Independent Grounds can't wait to get back to work, and thanks to this new federal grant, it won't be long before they do. I always say, hi, welcome to Independent Grounds Cafe. Can I take your order? Drew Acre is happy to make anything you want, but he does have a specialty. Vanilla frappe. Ooh, what goes into that? Frappe mix, milk. Agri says he was the number one employee at Independent Grounds in Roswell when they had to close down because of COVID. I was completely devastated. And thanks to the pandemic, I've lost my job. Owner Lorna Hyde was devastated too. Independent Grounds was her dream. She says they were forced to close their Roswell location in March of last year. We were a coffee shop without a home. So, and then trying to find a new home during a pandemic is not the easiest thing in the world. She set her sights on building a new shop, but quickly got priced out. By February, when we finally got our building permit, construction prices had gone like through the roof, like $100,000 more. It's why she applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Without it, she's not sure they ever could have reopened. Corporations get bailed out all the time, but mom and pops we're sometimes struggling. Banks don't, we're too small for banks to want to lend to us. Um, we may be a little too risky for other lending programs. She got $50,000 from the fund. She says that money will secure their future. Oh, thank God. It's good to be back at work. They're hoping to open in their new location in mid-June. All right, Caitlin, love that. Thank you. A new executive order from Governor Brian Kemp is now in effect. The order takes away restrictions from restaurants, bars, conventions, child care facilities, and live performance venues. There are still limited rules for long-term care facilities and schools, but this new order says public school districts cannot use the renewed public health state of emergency to require students and staff to wear a face mask. Temperature's really comfortable today. We were actually below average. We should be a lot warmer here at this time of year. The average high for the end of May is 84. Today was only 77. You could think a few clouds that were blocking out the sunshine at times. Also an easterly flow that kept us a little bit cooler. It was also a cool start this morning at 59. We should be around 65 for an average morning low for this time of year. So both this morning and this afternoon, we were below the average and no rain around. Uh, we could use some because we're now watching that deficit grow a little bit more. We're about, you know, an inch and a quarter, a little bit less than an inch and a quarter below where we should be in rainfall for the year. Now, take a look at these temperatures tonight. Feeling pretty comfortable out there, mid 70s for this hour. We're going down into the lower 70s. We're thinking by 10 o'clock. And then after that, we'll move down into the 60s, feeling kind of nice. And then by tomorrow morning, starting out this morning, we were in the upper 50s. In the morning, we'll be close to that, right at about 60 degrees for our low, then up to 63 at 8 o'clock and there will be a few clouds that will be mixing in with the sunshine again tomorrow on our scale from 1 to, to 11 where at 11 is a perfect day. We're going to go with a 10 on the wasometer that low of 60. We get up to 84 in the afternoon. So yeah, we do think it is going to be warmer tomorrow afternoon than we were today when we didn't even make it into the 80s out there for today. Here's the forecast track showing the quiet weather that we'll be dealing with out there tonight. Just a few clouds around at times that easterly flow that kept us cooler today is going to start shifting tomorrow more of a south easterly flow and that's going to help to warm us up we think into those uh, low to mid 80s tomorrow and again just a few clouds mixing in with the sunshine during the day but we don't think any of those clouds will give us any rain the rain chance is actually going to come up a little bit on Wednesday we're only going to go to about a 20 percent chance in the afternoon and evening hours but I do think we'll see even more clouds around on Wednesday we'll call it mostly cloudy skies in the morning Wednesday at noon time maybe a few breaks in the clouds and in the afternoon a few a little bit of sunshine breaking through 
through here and there, but you see a little bit of green showing up. That's where we have that low risk for a few isolated showers, not widespread at all, just a 20% chance that you'll get hit by a shower. Now we will see the moisture content in the air increasing once we get toward the end of the week and into the weekend. The humidity levels start rising. It's going to start feeling a little more muggy at times, and then that's also going to correspond with the rain chances going up too. You'll see this on Wednesday. Low rain chances here Wednesday at 20% on Thursday, especially afternoon and evening. We go up to a 40% chance, also a 40% chance on Friday. But as you can see for the weekend, not a widespread coverage of rain, just a few of those uh, more isolated showers with rain chances at 30% for the weekend. So a dry day, warm day tomorrow, highs near 84, but that's where we should be for this time of year. A few more clouds Wednesday and a 20% chance for a shower, then a 40% chance Thursday and Friday, scattered showers activity, and then a 30% chance of just the afternoon and evening pop-up variety of showers with the high temperatures generally there in the low and mid 80s. Exactly 100 years ago today, a violent massacre in Tulsa left hundreds dead and a community burned to the ground. A century later, residents are still grappling with the largely hidden history. NBC's Antonia Hilton reports. This morning, a solemn anniversary for the city of Tulsa, where a new memorial now commemorates the 1921 race massacre residents and supporters marking the moment with a march this weekend and gathering with two of the last known survivors in the place once known as Black Wall Street. Exactly a hundred years ago, a white mob descended on the affluent black community, killing an estimated 300 black Tulsans and destroying almost every home and business in the 35 block area, turning entire families into refugees. Dr. Tiffany Crutcher's great-grandmother was one of them. 10,000 people were displaced at the hands of racial terror violence. And 100 years later, people are coming back home, descendants from everywhere, and so we call this homecoming. That homecoming bringing moments of reflection and sharpening the push for accountability. No one has ever been held responsible for the attack. The way to heal America is the reparations for the Tulsa descendants of this massacre. Can there be healing without repayment? I do not believe that there can be healing without uh, restitution or reparations. Without accountability, many black Tulsans worry this centennial will ring hollow. Amid the weekend's somber memorials, armed demonstrators marched through Tulsa Saturday, blocking streets as they urged black residents to take advantage of their Second Amendment rights. The anniversary comes as the country continues to grapple with race and its history. Crutcher's dream is that this weekend becomes a call to action. Is anything giving you hope? The black community in Tulsa, we don't take injustice lying down lightly. We are not afraid to stand firm on what we believe and demand better for our community. The question had to come up sometime. If you're fully vaccinated, your partner's not, or vice versa, is a kiss safe? A viewer wanted to know, and our Verify team has the answer. Things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. 
This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta Roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate. As more people are getting vaccinated, there are some split relationships, meaning one is vaccinated, the other is not. A Verify viewer asked about the potential risks of kissing when this is the case. Ariane Detil has the answer. Let's verify. Our sources, the Mayo Clinic, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Stuart Ray, professor at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Yes, you can spread it and yes, you can contract it, but the risk is a lot lower than it was before being vaccinated. And Dr. David Sullivan, a professor of molecular biology and immunology at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. So theoretically, yes, but the chances are low. A recent article from the Mayo Clinic confirms COVID-19 can be transmitted through kissing, stating coming into contact with a person spit through kissing or other sexual activities could expose you to the virus. And both doctors and the CDC agree. Even if you're vaccinated, you can still contract COVID-19. There is some residual risk of transmission. And as long as community rates are high, then I think we ought to exercise some caution. So we can verify this as true. It is possible for a vaccinated person to spread COVID-19 to an unvaccinated person through kissing. But according to both doctors, it has more to do with your proximity to each other than the actual kissing. If there's something you'd like us to verify, send us an email. You can also text VERIFY to 404-885-7600. Ahead, a retired soldier is raising awareness about mental health issues that many of our veterans face. What he's doing to help him move forward from his past. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? so that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. 
That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Memorial Day is a time to honor U.S. service members who lost their lives for our country. One retired soldier is marking this holiday by bringing awareness to the mental health struggles many veterans face. Greg Washington served in the Army, received the Joint Service Commendation Medal. He asks us to take a moment to be mindful about other people's journeys and how healing happens one step at a time. Every journey starts with a step. These first couple of steps mean everything. And so I hope all y'all that are out there, I hope you start your journey as well. Meet me on my. We caught up with Greg C. Washington about 640,000 steps into his. Look, I'm a, I'm a little over 320 miles into this thing. Your feet have to be so tired. And look, you get to walk with me as I cross the Alabama state line. <laughs> Yay! After serving abroad and working in the corporate world, this retired combat veteran is on a new mission to walk 1,800 miles from Mississippi to New York, ending up at West Point, his alma mater. Good morning. It is day 27 of a walk to honor. Walking on the side of the road through 11 states, stopping in 25 cities to hold mental health rallies along the way. I was like, there are a lot of people out here suffering in silence, just like I am. The latest VA report shows nearly 18 veterans die by suicide every day. Many suspect the pandemic has made it worse. Greg says he was almost one of them. In my darkest hour, I was dealing with grief. I was dealing with trauma and depression. I had sustained injuries myself while I was deployed. I lost my two best friends, Emily Perez and Scotty Pace. And so I had survivor's remorse. And if it wasn't for my baby cousin, she was 13, 14 at the time, calling me in my darkest hour and just checking in on me, I might not be here. So he started walking. Hey, hey, good people. It's day 21 of the walk to honor. For those who no longer can and for those who need help taking that first step. This whole message is to um, just let people know that one suicide is not the way. And the call to action is to start your own personal journey of healing. Christy Diaz reporting. Greg Washington is coming straight through Atlanta. He's holding a rally at the red, white and blue facility on June 5th. And we did the math. By the time he gets to New York, he will have taken more than 3.6 million steps. A group of 10 men walked across seven cities over seven days to honor post 9-11 veterans and raise money and awareness for treatment at the Shepherd Center. The Shepherd's Men began last week in Arlington, Virginia. Today they were in Atlanta walking along Peachtree Street. They also spent time running and swimming in Maryland, Virginia and Tennessee. Among the group of 10 are active duty military and medically retired soldiers. Scientists in Vietnam have announced that they have found a new coronavirus variant. It's one of the three headlines we're following for you tonight. The new coronavirus variant is a hybrid of strains first found in India and the UK. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has now doubled in Vietnam in the past few weeks, possibly because this new variant is there. Mass vaccinations are underway in the country right now. Vietnam's health minister said the newly discovered variant might be more transmittable than others. 
Tonight, the federal government says employers can legally offer incentives for rewards for getting the COVID vaccine. The Equal Opportunity Employment Commission says incentives are, law, are allowed rather as long as employers don't basically tell you get it or be fired or make the incentives too big. There are only two exemptions companies must allow for that is a disability or religious reasons. And it is the final week of vaccinations at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The walk-up vaccine site will reopen tomorrow through Monday, June 7th. It's open until 6.30 most days, but it will be open on Wednesday until 9 p.m. On Memorial Day, President Joe Biden is looking ahead to his July 4th vaccination goal of getting at least 70% of adults with at least one shot. But there is also a new deadline. He's given the intelligence community 90 days to report on the origins of COVID-19. Tonight, Jennifer Bellamy is exploring why health experts say knowing where it started is crucial to preventing another pandemic. Understanding where COVID-19 came from. It's absolutely essential. It informs how we go forward and how we prepare ourselves against these threats in the future and reduce these likelihoods. Did it come from an animal in the wild or from one of China's wet markets or from a lab like Wuhan's Institute of Virology where researchers were looking at bat virus mutations? These doctors say getting an answer is critical. If it's from a lab, it's going to affect how we respond to this. We, we're going to need to focus on trying to get better controls and this sort of high risk research going forward. And there's the fear that history will repeat itself. Mother Nature is telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be COVID-26 and COVID-32 unless we fully understand the origins of COVID-19. COVID-19. President Joe Biden ordered the intelligence community to redouble its efforts in investigating the origins with a top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee alleging this about the lab leak this theory. This is the worst uh, cover up in human history uh, that we've seen resulting in 3.5 million deaths. There's still no evidence, which is why there are calls for an outbreak investigation in China. But at this point, China is refusing full access to the lab and its records. For the latest on the number of COVID-19 cases, deaths, and hospitalizations in your area, go to 11alive.com. You can also see the trends closest to where you live. Tennis star Naomi Osaka is withdrawing from the French Open. Before the tournament, Osaka said she was prioritizing her mental health and would not give interviews. She was fined $15,000 after skipping yesterday's news conference. Osaka shared a new message today, tweeting, I think now the best thing for the tournament, the other players, and my well-being is that I withdraw so that everyone can get back to focusing on tennis going on in Paris. She also wrote that she's suffered long bouts of depression since winning the 2018 U.S. Open against Serena Williams in what was a contentious match. As fans return to sporting events, we've seen several incidents of bad, bad behavior. Hawks supporters will not forget this incident in New York when a Knicks fan spit in the direction of Trey Young. And there was another bad scene last night in Boston. Brooklyn Nets player Kyrie Irving, who used to play in Boston, was leaving the court when a fan threw a water bottle at him. Police say they arrested a 21-year-old Boston fan, and the Celtics organization says he could face a lifetime ban from the arena. That fan is now charged with assault and battery using a dangerous weapon for at least the fourth incident of fans hurling items or racial slurs at NBA players just during the course of the playoffs. Sunday afternoon, the Hawks dominated the Knicks at State Farm Arena to take a commanding 3-1 series lead. Maria Martin tells us how Atlanta preparing for a return to New York. Yesterday, the Hawks made sure that New York understood that State Farm Arena was their house. In fact, Atlanta never even lost inside that arena for the entire month of May. Now they're just one win away from a spot in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Game five, that's going to head back to Madison Square Garden where the Hawks were able to win in game one. And at this point, the atmosphere is pretty much nothing Atlanta can't handle just so long as no one spits on Trey again. Obviously, the, the last one is the, the toughest win. Uh, the last one to get is going to be the toughest. Um, so for us, um, we, we know they're going to probably be a little bit more physical, be more aggressive, um, play with a lot more energy. But I mean, for us, we got we got to do the same thing. Uh, we can't just be complacent with what we've done at home. We got to bring bring even more energy on the road. So the Knicks will have to try to get their best to Julius Randle. 
He needs to get involved since the Hawks have contained him the entire series. One more win and the Hawks are moving on. Game five happens Wednesday in New York, but still no game time yet. All right, Maria, thank you. A popular Midtown restaurant is shutting its doors after 30 years. We have details on what's coming next to that area. Routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at... A popular restaurant in Midtown Atlanta is closing its doors after three decades. A restaurant executive tells us high rises will go up in their spot on Jun Juniper and 12th. 11 Alive Chanu Her explains what's next for Einstein's. I'm so sad that they're closing. Since his days in college, Ryan Sellers has been coming to Einstein's in Midtown Atlanta. And on its last day open, he's walking by one last time. It's, it's, it's historic. Like I said, I've been coming here for over 10 plus years. So to see that it's leaving to build some high rises, I mean, I'm kind of sad. But After 30 years here at the corner of 12th and Juniper, Einstein's will now make way for new high rises moving in. It'll look like this rendering published in the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Heather Watson, the director of sales, says some employees are moving on in their career while some are moving to other sister restaurants of Einstein's. But Einstein's future, it's up in the air. It hasn't been disclosed whether or not there'll be a spot in the new development or if um, we are going to carry on the Einstein's brand, but there's definitely 
a lot of ideas floating around, different conceptualized ideas. Marcus Merritt says he really hopes Einstein's will reopen, and same with Joe's on Juniper next door, which is also closing. I love that fact that we have a lot of establishments, especially LGBTQ establishments in the area. Um, so when I heard it, I was upset. But Watson says for those loyal customers who still want to spend some time at Einstein's before they're forever gone, there's still an opportunity. We will be here throughout the summer still as far as a place where you can book parties and things like that. Well, we're enjoying a really nice, comfortable night out there tonight with uh, dry weather. We don't have any rain around, just a few little clouds and really dry over a big part of the southeast. If you're looking for rain and even the storm risk, that's mainly out to the west. And you can see the level one and level two risk for severe weather uh, tonight, which is back into Texas. We're not worried about that here in the metro Atlanta area, but we are going to be watching this system, though, as it gets a little bit closer to us trying to move to the east. You see that marginal risk just moving over into parts of Arkansas and also into parts of Louisiana. But then as we go into Wednesday, really the only thing we're going to see here is just that increase for just general showers, maybe an isolated thunder shower around, but we don't expect anything severe. Wednesday, we'll have about a 20% chance for a shower, but again, we don't think it's going to be like a widespread severe weather outbreak or anything like that. Now, we had some really comfortable temperatures out there today with highs that didn't even make it up to 80. We were in the uh, mid and upper 70s for highs today, and that cooler air is starting to retreat as that east wind kind of breaks up, and we'll begin to see some warmer air moving in to tomorrow. High temperatures getting up to around 84 degrees in the afternoon, and we're pretty much going to hold for the next few days. Temperatures in the low and mid 80s, just we'll call it warm for this time of year. That's really 84 is our average high for this time of year, but that's going to start mixing in with a few scattered showers once we get toward the end of the week, and that'll keep us there. We're thinking in those low and mid 80s for the end of the week, and also as we head into the weekend. No big cold snaps or anything moving into our area, but also not a you know, scorching temperatures either. It looks like that's mainly going to stay more well out to the west where you see the orange colors showing up there to the west, and that's going to stay away from us for a while. So just expect temperatures near average as we go through the next few days. In fact, this graph shows the average high for this time of year, which is 84. That's this white line right here. We'll be there Tuesday. We'll be there again Wednesday, just barely below average on Thursday, Friday, and also on Saturday. So pretty typical temperatures here uh, for the end of May going into the beginning of June. We're also dry right now. This map right here, the purple color shows the very dry air that we have in place, but that's going to start changing with a few more clouds tomorrow, a little more humidity coming in on Wednesday, just a little more humidity, and this is when we're going to introduce a 20% chance for a shower, but then on Thursday, also on Friday, as you see this moisture content a little bit higher here, we're going to go with about a 40% chance for showers, and for the weekend, we're not totally going to dry out, but it's also not going to be a washout either. We're going to have about a 30% chance each day for the weekend, of just a few of those isolated afternoon pop up showers around. But check out those temperatures 84 Tuesday, 84 Wednesday, but we do have that 20% chance for a shower Wednesday with a few more clouds around. Then a 40% chance for showers Thursday and Friday highs around 82, 83 degrees, 83 again Saturday and Sunday with that 30% chance for a shower. We'll hold on to a 30% chance for afternoon showers again on Monday with highs near 82. All right, Chris, we've been talking about this, that tomorrow marks the start of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Experts say it looks like it may be a busy year. The Colorado State University Tropical Meteorology Project team is forecasting 17 named storms, including eight hurricanes. The season runs through November 30th. America is bouncing back. That was evident over the holiday weekend with beaches full, businesses booming in some areas, and what travel experts think could be the busiest travel day in over a year happening today. Tracy Potts has a look at how America is looking beyond the pandemic. Despite a washout in the Northeast, beaches across America were packed this weekend. Everybody's so excited to be out. Myrtle Beach brought in extra police to handle crowds. Hotels were predicted to be 80% full. I love it. I'm so glad we're almost back to normal. Holding up all four, Elio Castro Neves. In Indianapolis, the largest gathering in over a year, the Indy 500 with 135,000 people and COVID vaccine scenes on site. In Washington, thousands of motorcycles roared through the nation's capital. Rolling Thunder is back. 
Feels good. Crowds packed national parks and movie theaters as President Biden reminded the country why we commemorate Memorial Day. We only have one truly sacred obligation, and that's to equip those we send into harm's way with all they need. Flags at Arlington and other veteran cemeteries honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. We remember you and we want to celebrate you and we want to thank you more importantly. And today, five million passengers who've passed through airport security since Thursday head home. Officials say it could be the busiest travel day in over a year. Still to come, a recent study is influencing how health experts say parents could help prevent food allergies in young children. We're breaking it down for you next. Flash COVID numbers, track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's... Today is the last day of Food Allergy Awareness Month. Roughly 32 million Americans have food allergies, a potentially deadly reaction to certain foods. But new federal guidelines could help lower that number. Tracy A. McPeer shows us how one Atlanta family is trying to help prevent children from developing them in the first place. Eight years ago, when JJ and Katherine Jackson's first child, Niall, was three, a walnut changed everything. Her eyes were swollen shut, she was covered in hives, um, and it was terrifying. You always worry when they're out of your sight that they might accidentally eat something um, that could harm them. The guidance at the time was to avoid giving tree nuts and peanuts to babies. In 2015, the Jacksons had their third child, James, and a new study came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, which said, Introducing peanuts in the first year of life and keeping them in the diet until age five reduced peanut allergy risks in babies in the study by 86 percent. 
Food allergy dietitian Sherry Collins says that study helped change pediatric feeding guidelines around the world. It's a huge deal. It's changed decades-long thinking on feeding infants. You know. And now it's helped change the guidelines here in the U.S. Every five years, the USDA releases new guidelines on how Americans should eat. Now, in these latest guidelines, they included children under the age of two and how you should feed them to help prevent food allergies. According to the new guidelines, early introduction is crucial between four months and a year. Now, you should introduce all common food allergens when solid foods start, and consistency is key. Once you introduce an allergen, you need to maintain it. When it comes to peanuts, Colin says there are easy ways to introduce the allergen to infants. But you can start with just a little bit of peanut butter or powdered peanut butter and mix it with some warm water breast milk or formula, and that makes a perfectly safe slurry for introducing peanut, for example. To make peanut exposure even easier, last year, the Jacksons reached out to the lead doctor in the LEAP study, Dr. Gideon Lack, to create preventative peanut puffs. Then, during the pandemic, they donated them to food insecure families, raising awareness to help bring food allergy numbers down. Food is such an important part of how we all, you know, spend time together and, um, and to have fear um, in those moments where you're gathering with friends and with family um, is tough, um, especially for a little one. Jackson says she's glad to play a part in helping other families avoid peanut allergies. She just wishes this information would have been available when Niall was a baby. If there was anything that we could have done to prevent her from having a food allergy, we would have done it. Congress passed a resolution last week declaring May 28th as National Food Allergy Prevention Awareness Day. Ahead, Braves outfielder Marcel Azuna is out of jail. We'll have the latest on his court hearing today as he faces charges of domestic violence. To chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions, the 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. For Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code.
With COVID-19 restrictions loosening, the sounds of summer are returning. Poolside parties, backyard barbecues filling up the calendar as Americans slowly start to socialize again. NBC's Dan Shineman shares some tips on staying safe through the summer. Signs of summer, sun, sand, and barbecues. But before you fire up that grill, keep safety in mind. Make sure your grill is away from your house, the grill is stable and level, and it's clean. You know, grill brush safety is something you can easily and totally take for granted. I mean, you actually tend to think of it as a sort of crucial maintenance step, which, which it is, but I, I think a lot of people don't know that it, it can pose a pretty serious hazard. Hazards that include tiny metal bristles from your grill brush searing into your food and then lodging itself in your throat. And if you swallow one, it can puncture parts of the digestive system, like the esophagus, intestines, stomach, or liver. I believe it was over a 14 year span, 1,700 people ended up in the emergency room having swallowed metal bristles just from grill brushes, uh, which means it's happening probably over 100 times a year. Consumer Reports senior home and garden editor Paul Hope says if you use a metal grill brush, follow these tips. Um, the first is you want to make sure that the bristles are in good shape, um, that they're not bent or splayed in any way. You should go over the grill grates once you're done cleaning. Um, you can even use a paper towel uh, soaked in water or oil and just go over the grates very carefully and make sure you haven't left any bristles behind. Hope says the risk of bristle encounter is low and following simple tips will keep your grill safe and your belly full. Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive News prime time on the ATL starts now. Honoring fallen veterans this year, a tradition we can once again do in person. A look at Memorial Day ceremonies all across Metro Atlanta. New developments tonight as Braves player Marcelo Zuna makes his first court appearance after being arrested over the weekend. We're going to look at what's next for the Braves outfielder. And a local coffee shop rebuilding and creating opportunities for others after being hit really hard by the pandemic. How federal funds are fueling them once again. Well, we're going to begin tonight, folks, with the latest developments in the domestic violence case involving Atlanta Braves outfielder Marcel Ozuna. Prosecutors say he threatened to kill his wife, and police officers say that they saw him strangling her. He's now charged with assault and battery. Today, a, a Fulton County judge granted Ozuna bond and ordered him to stay away from his wife. No contact with her. But he can have contact with the couple's children. 11 Alive's Joe Hinkie has more information from today's hearing. According to the warrant, the defendant did threaten to kill her and then proceeded to strangle her, such that the strangulation did not stop until um, officers with the Sandy Springs Police Department entered into the home. Fulton County prosecutors asked a judge to keep Marcelo Zuna in jail, given allegations from this past weekend and beyond. She has provided that there has been other instances of abuse in this case. While not reported, there were other instances of abuse. I'm going to set the bond at 20000 a Fulton County judge, though, granted Ozuna bond during this morning's hearing, where Ozuna sat silently and his attorney, Lars Anderson, spoke for him. Mr. Ozuna and his wife are married and at best it is described as a toxic relationship. According to details released by Sandy Springs Police, a 911 call brought officers to Ozuna's home Saturday. They heard screaming, found a wide open front door, and witnessed Ozuna grabbing his wife by the neck. Police have also accused Ozuna of hitting his wife with his arm cast during that incident. Ozuna could be seen wearing his neon cast today after being injured last week during a game. It is why he stayed in Atlanta this weekend as the Braves traveled to New York. Anderson said the police report does not tell the whole story. There are other and additional facts which will come forward which will put this incident in a, uh, a more proper perspective. Azuna's attorney asked the judge to grant him bond and added the couple is working on a divorce. She has no objection and would like to have the father of her children released on some type of bond. Also advocating for Azuna's release, his wife through her attorney. And my client has expressed that she has no imminent fear of death or bodily harm. She is currently in Miami-Dade County. Joe Hinky reporting for us tonight. By the way, you can see the full details of Ozuna's arrest and charges right now on 11alive.com.
Gwinnett County fire officials say that uh, everyone is okay after an apartment fire happening in Duluth. It's one of the other local headlines we are following for you tonight. It happened at the Portico Apartments on Preston Park Drive just before 1 p.m. Firefighters say there was heavy smoke and flames coming from the balcony of a third floor apartment. The fire severely damaging two units, the attic and part of the breezeway. Nearby apartments were damaged as well. The American Red Cross says it is helping 20 people. You may have noticed parts of Edgewood Avenue blocked off this weekend, and it will stay that way throughout the summer. It's an effort to crack down on street racing and to help keep you safe. The block between Jackson Street and Boulevard is closed to traffic starting each Friday morning until Monday morning. It started this past weekend and will continue until September 12th. This is a popular area for nightlife. There are several bars along that stretch. District 2 of Atlanta City Councilman uh, Amir Faroki says that he and District 5 Councilwoman and Natalie and Archibong work together on the policy. The family of 20-year-old Xavier Weatherly says he has been found alive. The college student went missing last week, and his mother said he was on the way to her home in Noonan from his uncle's house, but he never showed up. Now we know he's alive and okay. There are no details on where he was found or what happened. Hey, we're keeping an eye on the sky tonight as we have um, no rain around, but we have been dealing with just a few clouds and a lot of those are breaking up for the late night hours tonight, overnight, and then tomorrow we'll see a few more clouds that'll be moving in, but really quiet out here. No rain around at all. In fact, no rain next door in Alabama or in Mississippi, and then you run into some showers here moving through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, just beginning to move into Arkansas and also into Missouri. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for parts of Texas, and this is the area where it's going to be more active tonight where you see that potential for some stronger storms really south of Dallas between Dallas and Houston moving into the western parts of Texas where that level one risk goes up to a level two risk there along the, uh, the border there between Mexico and Texas. Now I know we're watching this system and I know you're probably looking at this thinking okay does that mean these showers are moving our way? Well with this system we do think we will see more moisture moving in but the severe weather threat is going to stay to the west of us for a while. Tomorrow, it's a level one risk for parts of Arkansas into Texas and then in parts of western Texas and over into New Mexico. And we're just going to have a few more clouds building into our area tomorrow. We really don't expect any rain tomorrow. But on Wednesday, that rain chance does go up only a little bit, up to 20% in parts of North Georgia and Metro Atlanta. And even with that, we don't think any of those will be severe. We will see those rain chances going up a little bit higher, though, on Thursday and on Friday. Coming up, we'll talk about whether or not we have any potential for any thunderstorms on those days. Many may have forgotten the reason why May 31st is called a holiday. But as long as those stars and stripes are held high, You'll remember it when we see that flag wave. Remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice today across Metro Atlanta and throughout our country, we honor the men and women who gave their lives for our freedom. As you know, this is a debt we will never repay, but we're going to spend a lifetime trying to show our gratitude. The COVID-19 pandemic canceled many in-person commemorations, but this year people were allowed to attend many Memorial Day tributes across the Metro and some still offered virtual options. Well, I'm going to go today and enjoy my great grandbabies for the first time uh, in, a, in a, over a year. You know, we're going to be in the backyard picnicking and, and I think that every family is doing that, but we still got to be cautious. Today, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris also visiting uh, Arlington National Cemetery for the annual wreath laying ceremony. The president delivered a message saying our country can never repay the debt owed to someone who made the ultimate sacrifice, but Americans can honor them by fighting to preserve our democracy. The president also speaking about how this day impacts families across the country, including his own. Sunday will mark the sixth anniversary of the death of his son, Bo, an Iraq war veteran. Yesterday marked the anniversary of his death. And it's a hard time, a hard time of year for me and our family just like it is for so many of you. 
It can hurt to remember, but the hurt is how we feel and how we heal. The president also said we must honor their sacrifices by addressing the work needed as a nation to become fuller, freer, and more just. And for many folks out there, you know, the reasons for observing Memorial Day are deeply personal. This year is extra special for some because of the chance to get together in person to honor our fallen military men and women and also to meet face to face with others who share similar experiences. 11 Alive's Chinu Her has more. In many different corners of the metro, people got together today to remember those who lost their lives serving our country. This year, people were able to get together in person after last year, many events were switched to virtual because of COVID-19. I actually was in the Air Force for 10 years and I was a fighter pilot. For Mike Reed, joining fellow Dunwoody neighbors to observe Memorial Day was a must. Doing something like this, like they're doing right now, does honor those who paid that sacrifice. And it also reminds us that there's a price to be paid. Mike was in the Air Force from 1980 until 1990. And in that time, he says he had to deliver heartbreaking news to families who lost loved ones, and he wasn't spared from loss either. Even uh, those, those were the Cold War years. We still had one or two people that we're very close to that uh, took off on a mission and uh, didn't come back. Across Metro Atlanta Monday, people joined similar Memorial Day events. In Decula, Juanita Jackson and her grandkids were thrilled to be at the town's parade this year in person versus last year when it was virtual. We did something at home. That was it because, you know, we had to stay inside. We couldn't be out. You know, like what we're doing right now. That's why I'm so excited about today. This is a great opportunity for the community to get together, right? And especially for an occasion like this, remembering the uh, fallen soldiers and veterans. Right? At Piedmont Park, the memory of 240 men from Fulton County killed in action during the Vietnam War will live on in a new monument going up in the near future. For Mike, whether it's done online or in person, what matters most is remembering. Being able to see this many people that support it this way tells you, it warms your heart that yes, they do get it. Well, our living veterans certainly remember their fallen friends and fellow soldiers, their service members. Doris Guzman is 101 years old, and she was a nurse in the Navy, and she now lives in Metro Atlanta. Well, today, she helped, she um, wanted to pay her respects in person. 11 Alive photojournalist Aiden Brown was there when she did. Grand Dory, do you see all the flags? Well, I've been blessed with a healthy 101-year-old veteran mama, and every year my daughter and I take her out to look at the flags, so today we came down to downtown Doraville so that she can see how communities memorialize her fellow veterans. Really? They didn't address your rank? You were an officer. Uh, we grew up hearing wonderful stories. I know my favorite, of course, is that she did march in President Roosevelt's funeral procession. So I hear about it through her and I share it with my daughter and I hope to extend that legacy through all the generations. Uh -oh. When you were in the Navy, were those Air Force boys after those nurses? She's 101 and tough as nails. They don't make them like they make her anymore. <laughs> Dorothy McDougal, William Hopper, all a bunch of heroes. Sure, yeah. Doesn't matter what you do when people are watching, it matters how you are when people aren't there. And that's how we grew up. And I think that comes from having a, a Navy grandmother. <laughs> a great example, by the way. Here's a, a photograph of Doris Guzman as a Navy nurse. Her family tells 11 Alive she still is an avid reader, and they point out that she does not even need reading glasses. Way to go. Hey, we want you to join the conversation on the 11 Alive Facebook page. We're asking, how are you remembering our fallen heroes today? Just search for 11 Alive on Facebook and share your thoughts. Memorial Day is also a very busy time to travel. AAA is reporting a price decrease at the pumps today. A decrease. It went down. They say Georgia drivers are now paying an average of $2.91 a gallon. That's two cents less than a week ago. According to AAA, some road trippers did report seeing gas stations with low fuel, but it didn't stop them from filling up at all. So far, TSA reports screening more than 7 million people between Thursday and Sunday. 
Georgia transportation officials tell 11 Alive that they expect more than one and a half million passengers for this Memorial Day weekend, which would be on record for the highest numbers since the pandemic began. Still to come, a local coffee shop was given federal funds to help it rebuild after it suffered losses because of the pandemic, and they're helping a special group find employment. And don't forget, we're streaming right now on the Love It Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more Love It Alive news primetime after the break. Obid numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. Welcome back, everyone. Almost a half million small business owners applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. $75 billion in COVID relief money earmarked for the hardest hit mom and pop businesses. And one of the businesses to receive that assistance is a small coffee shop that employs adults with special needs. And the owner tells our Caitlin Ross the money is helping them open at a brand new location. The employees at Independent Grounds can't wait to get back to work. And thanks to this new federal grant, it won't be long before they do. I always say, hi, welcome to Independent Grounds Cafe. Can I take your order? Drew Acre is happy to make anything you want, but he does have a specialty. Vanilla frappe. Ooh, what goes into that? Frappe mix, milk. Acre says he was the number one employee at Independent Grounds in Roswell when they had to close down because of COVID. I was completely devastated. And thanks to the pandemic, I've lost my job. Owner Lorna Hyde was devastated too. Independent Grounds was her dream. She says they were forced to close their Roswell location in March of last year. We were a coffee shop without a home. So, and then trying to find a new home during a pandemic is not the easiest thing in the world. She set her sights on building a new shop, but quickly got priced out. By February, when we finally got our building permit, construction prices had gone like through the roof, like $100,000 more. It's why she applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Without it, she's not sure they ever could have reopened. Corporations get bailed out all the time, but mom and pops we're sometimes struggling. Banks don't, we're too small for banks to want to lend to us. Um, we may be a little too risky for other lending programs. She got $50,000 from the fund. She says that money will secure their future. Oh, thank God. It's good to be back at work. They're hoping to open in their new location in mid-June. All right, so back here in Georgia, a new executive order from Governor Brian Kemp is now in full effect. Now, the order takes away restrictions for restaurants, bars, conventions, child care facilities, and live performance venues. There are still limited rules for long-term care facilities and schools, but this new order says public school districts cannot use the renewed public health state of emergency to require students and staff to wear a face mask. 
Well, it's feeling pretty comfortable out there tonight. Maybe you are out in the backyard for a little while longer tonight, cooking out or just hanging out with the neighbors here on this Monday night for Memorial Day. And uh, it's really kind of comfortable. In fact, here in town, we're still in the 70s, but lower 70s, 73 degrees at this hour. We have more 70s here outside the city on the north side, but Athens, you're already in the 60s at 68. Carrollton is 67. We have some 60s south and west of the city and even lower 60s up in Blairsville and in Clayton. We do have mostly clear skies, just a few clouds out there. Nothing really major at all. And when you wake up early tomorrow morning, yeah, it's time to go back to work. If you had the long holiday weekend uh, in the morning, the sun's going to be coming up at around 628. As the sun is rising, there will be just a few clouds around and temperatures will be around 60 degrees here in the city, but in the outlying areas, it will be a little cooler. So we'll have some refreshing air in the upper 50s in some spots. The temperatures start to move up by 8 o'clock in the morning. Maybe when you're out just uh, getting into that traffic, partly cloudy skies around 64 at 8. And then by 10 o'clock in the morning, we're already going to be up 10 more degrees from 8 o'clock. We we're at 74, so it is going to be warming here with partly cloudy skies. Those temperatures will continue to warm during the day, eventually getting up to around 84. Now today's high was 80. That's an update from what I told you a little bit earlier. The National Weather Service updated that high uh, temperature and it did get up to 80 degrees today. Tomorrow, though, a little bit warmer, up to 84 with the partly cloudy skies again. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 10, not quite an 11, just because some of those clouds will be blocking out the sunshine at times. Here's the future radar product. You can see here what we're watching with an easterly flow right now. That kept some spots with a few clouds around today, and that kept our temperatures below the average. And then in the morning, you can see a few of those clouds here at lunchtime. We'll call it partly cloudy, maybe a few more clouds up in North Georgia, fewer clouds on the south side. But I want you to see here that these clouds that we're going to have around tomorrow mixing in with that sunshine will not be producing any rain. Uh, it's going to be a dry day here tomorrow, but then things change a little bit going into Wednesday. We will see more clouds around. We'll call this mostly cloudy skies in the morning on Wednesday, maybe a few peaks of sunshine breaking through those clouds at lunchtime on Wednesday and then in the afternoon. Not a lot of green showing up on the map here, but we'll have just a few isolated showers late afternoon into early evening on Wednesday. In fact, the rain chance is going to be on the low end at only about um, 20 percent. So just know that it's a really low rain risk here on on Wednesday. Once we get toward the end of the week, though, the rain chances are going to start coming up just a little bit more. Now, take a look at the moisture content in the air. This is our humidity, and we often measure that amount of, of moisture in the air with our dew points. When we have dew points in the 50s, which is what we had today, it's kind of that comfortable feel to the air. Not too muggy, um, air pretty dry. That'll be with us. Once we get into Wednesday, though, that's when that rain chance goes up to 20%, and then higher rain chances once we get toward the end of the week as we get additional moisture content in the air there. And you see on Wednesday, just that low rain chance. Late on Thursday is when we'll see that 30 to 40% chance for showers. Friday, another 40% chance for showers. And then we're going to kind of be in this pattern where we've been spoiled by dry air. Late in the week and into next week, we're going to see some of this moisture still around, but I want you to know that it's not going to be all day rain events. We're just talking about scattered showers a little more likely Thursday and Friday afternoon, and then maybe just a few isolated showers here for Saturday, Sunday and Monday with temperatures. there pretty much in the low and some mid 80s. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. You know, exactly 100 years ago today, a violent massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma left hundreds dead in a community burned to the ground. A century later, residents are still grappling with the violent, largely hidden history. NBC's Antonia Hilton has their story. This morning, a solemn anniversary for the city of Tulsa, where a new memorial now commemorates the 1921 race massacre. Residents and supporters marking the moment with a march this weekend and gathering with two of the last known survivors in the place once known as Black Wall Street. Exactly a hundred years ago, a white mob descended on the affluent black community, killing an estimated 300 black Tulsans and destroying almost every home and business in the 35 block area, turning entire families into refugees. Dr. Tiffany Crutcher's great grandmother was one of them. 10,000 people were displaced at the hands of racial terror violence. And 100 years later, people are coming back home, descendants from everywhere and so we call this homecoming. That homecoming bringing moments of reflection and sharpening the push for accountability. 
No one has ever been held responsible for the attack. The way to heal America is a reparations for the Tulsa descendants of this massacre. Can there be healing without repayment? I do not believe that there can be healing without uh, restitution or reparations. Without accountability, many black Tulsans worry this centennial will ring hollow. Amid the weekend's somber memorials, armed demonstrators marched through Tulsa Saturday, blocking streets as they urged black residents to take advantage of their Second Amendment rights. The anniversary comes as the country continues to grapple with race and its history. Crutcher's dream is that this weekend becomes a call to action. Is anything giving you hope? The black community in Tulsa, we don't take injustice lying down lightly. We are not afraid to stand firm on what we believe and demand better for our community. And the question had to come up sometime, folks. If you're fully vaccinated and your partner is not, or vice versa, is it safe to be intimate with them? A viewer wanted to know, and our Verify team has your answer. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim as uh, more people get vaccinated, some couples are currently stuck in a spot where one partner is vaccinated and the other partner is not. And that can make sharing a kiss a little awkward for people out there. A verified viewer is asking about the risk of kissing when only one person is vaccinated against COVID-19. Ariane Daytil has that answer. Let's verify our sources, the Mayo Clinic, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Stuart Ray, professor at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Yes, you can spread it and yes, you can contract it, but the risk is a lot lower than it was before being vaccinated. And Dr. David Sullivan, a professor of molecular biology and immunology at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. So theoretically, yes, but the chances are low. A recent article from the Mayo Clinic confirms COVID-19 can be transmitted through kissing, stating coming into contact with a person 
and spit through kissing or other sexual activities could expose you to the virus. And both doctors and the CDC agree. Even if you're vaccinated, you can still contract COVID-19. There is some residual risk of transmission. And as long as community rates are high, then I think we ought to exercise some caution. So we can verify this as true. It is possible for a vaccinated person to spread COVID-19 to an unvaccinated person through kissing. But according to both doctors, it has more to do with your proximity to each other than the actual kissing. There you go. So if there's something you want us to verify, send us an email. You can also text us at verify to 404-885-7600. Straight ahead, a retired soldier is now raising awareness about mental health issues for many veterans out there, what he's doing to help them and others, himself as well, as they march forward from the past. Alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta Roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponds, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Welcome back, every day. You know, Memorial Day is a chance to honor U.S. service members who lost their lives for our country. One retired soldier is marking the holiday by bringing awareness to the mental health struggles many of our veterans face every single day. So today, let's just take a moment to be mindful of their journey and how healing happens one step at a time. Every journey starts with a step. These first couple of steps mean everything. And so I hope all y'all that are out there, I hope you start your journey as well. Meet me on my. We caught up with Greg C. Washington about 640,000 steps into his. Look, I'm a, I'm a little over 320 miles into this thing. Your feet have to be so tired. And look, you get to walk with me as I cross the Alabama state line. <laughs> Yay! 
After serving abroad and working in the corporate world, this retired combat veteran is on a new mission to walk 1,800 miles from Mississippi to New York, ending up at West Point, his alma mater. Good morning. It is day 27 of a walk to honor. Walking on the side of the road through 11 states, stopping in 25 cities to hold mental health rallies along the way. I was like, there are a lot of people out here suffering in silence, just like I am. The latest VA report shows nearly 18 veterans die by suicide every day. Many suspect the pandemic has made it worse. Greg says he was almost one of them. In my darkest hour, I was dealing with grief. I was dealing with trauma and depression. I had sustained injuries myself while I was deployed. I lost my two best friends, Emily Perez and Scotty Pace. And so I had survivor's remorse. And if it wasn't for my baby cousin, she was 13, 14 at the time, calling me in my darkest hour and just checking in on me, I might not be here. So he started walking. Hey, hey, good people. It's day 21 of the walk to honor. For those who no longer can and for those who need help taking that first step. This whole message is to um, just let people know that one suicide is not the way. And the call to action is to start your own personal journey of healing. Man, what an awesome story. That was Christy Diaz reporting. Now, Greg is coming straight through Atlanta. He's going to be holding a rally at the Red, White, and Blue facility on June 5th. And so we did the math, did the math. And by the time he gets to New York City, he will have taken more than 3.6 million steps. And we honor him for what he's doing. A group of 10 men walked across seven cities over seven days to honor post 9-11 veterans and raise money and awareness for treatment at the Shepherd Center. The Shepherd's men began last week in Arlington, Virginia. Today they, they were in Atlanta walking along Peachtree Street. They also spent time running and swimming in Maryland, Virginia and Tennessee. Among the group of 10 are active duty military and medically retired soldiers. Scientists in Vietnam have now announced that they have found a new coronavirus. It's one of the three headlines we're following for you tonight. The new coronavirus variant is a hybrid of strains first found in India and the UK. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has doubled in Vietnam in the last few weeks, possibly because of this new variant. Mass vaccinations are underway in that country right now. Vietnam's health ministry or minister says that the newly discovered variant might be more transmit transmissible than other variants. Tonight, the federal government says employers can legally offer incentives or rewards for getting the COVID-19 vaccine. The Equal Opportunity Employment Commission says incentives are allowed as long as employers don't tell you get it or you're fired or make the incentives too big. There are only two exemptions companies must allow for, a disability or religious reasons. And it's the final week of vaccinations at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The walk-up vaccine site, vaccine site will reopen tomorrow through Monday, June 7th. It's open until 6.30 most days, but on Wednesday, it will be open until 9 p.m. On Memorial Day, President Joe Biden is looking ahead to his 4th of July vaccination goal in getting at least 70% of adults in our country with at least one shot. But there's also a new deadline he's given to intelligence communities, uh, 90 days to report the origins of COVID-19. And tonight, Jennifer Bellamy is exploring why health experts say knowing where it started is crucial to preventing another pandemic. Understanding where COVID-19 came from, it's absolutely essential. It informs how we go forward and how we prepare ourselves against these threats in the future and reduce these likelihoods. Did it come from an animal in the wild or from one of China's wet markets or from a lab like Wuhan's Institute of Virology where researchers were looking at bat virus mutations? These doctors say getting an answer is critical. If it's from a lab, it's going to affect how we respond to this. We, we're going to need to focus on trying to get better controls and this sort of high risk research going forward. And there's the fear that history will repeat itself. Mother Nature is telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be COVID-26 and COVID-32 unless we fully understand the origins of COVID-19. 
COVID-19. President Joe Biden ordered the intelligence community to redouble its efforts in investigating the origins, with a top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee alleging this about the lab leak theory. This is the worst uh, cover-up in human history. Uh, that we've seen resulting in 3.5 million deaths. There's still no evidence, which is why there are calls for an outbreak investigation in China. But at this point, China is refusing full access to the lab and its records. For the latest on uh, the latest number of the COVID cases, deaths and hospitalizations in your area, just head over to 11alive.com. You can also see the trends in your area. Pretty nice night out there with temperatures still holding in the 70s here in the city. We do have some 60s though in the outlying areas, mostly clear skies, just a few clouds around out there tonight. You know, we had a few clouds earlier this uh, afternoon and during the afternoon or early evening that was kind of blocking out some of that sunshine, but the sun is down now and we have some more breaks in those clouds. Now we do have rain that we're watching well out to the west and this is still going to take a little while before it makes it to us, but eventually we are going to see more Gulf moisture moving our way over the next couple of days. First, increasing the humidity levels in the atmosphere. We'll start to see a few more clouds mixing in with the sunshine, and then we'll see low rain chances moving in on Wednesday, and then a little better chances for some scattered showers for your Thursday and also for your Friday. I want to give you an update here. Earlier, we reported our high today was 77. The National Weather Service has updated that now, saying that it was 80 degrees for our high, but still, that's below the average. We should be around 84 for this time of year. Also, it was below average this morning when we got down to 59. It should be 65 here at the end of May. Can you believe tomorrow is June 1st? Stay with us and we'll let you know what to expect as we roll into a new month and talk more about those rain chances for late week. All right, Chris, so in a couple of minutes, tennis star Naomi Osaka is withdrawing from the French Open. Now, before the tournament, Osaka said that she was prioritizing her mental health and would not give any more interviews to the media. Well, she was fined $15,000 after skipping yesterday's news conference. Osaka shared a message today. She tweeted, I think now the best thing for the tournament, the other players, and my well-being is that I withdraw so that everyone can get back to focusing on tennis and going on in Paris. She also wrote that she has suffered long bouts of depression since winning the 2018 U.S. Open against Serena Williams in what was a contentious match. And fans return to sporting events, and we've seen several horrible incidents, bad behavior from fans. Hawks fans will not forget this incident in New York City when a, a Knicks fan spit in the direction of Trey Young. And there was another bad scene last night in Boston. Brooklyn Nets player Kyrie Irving, who used to play for Boston, was leaving the court when a fan threw a water bottle directly at him narrowly missing him. Police said that they arrested the 21 year old Boston fan and the Celtics organization says that he could face a lifetime ban from the arena. Well, that fan is charged with assault and battery by using a dangerous weapon. It is at least the fourth incident of fans hurling items or racial slurs at NBA players during the playoffs. Sunday afternoon, the Hawks dominated the Knicks at State Farm Arena to take a, a commanding 3-1 series lead. And uh, Maria Martin tells us how Atlanta is preparing for a return to the Big Apple. Yesterday, the Hawks made sure that New York understood that State Farm Arena was their house. In fact, Atlanta never even lost inside that arena for the entire month of May. Now they're just one win away from a spot in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Game five, that's going to head back to Madison Square Garden, where the Hawks were able to win in game one. And at this point, the atmosphere is pretty much nothing Atlanta can't handle, just so long as no one spits on Trey again. Obviously, the, the last one is the, the toughest win. Uh, the last one to get is going to be the toughest. Um, so for us, um, we, we know they're going to probably be a little bit more physical, be more aggressive, uh, play with a lot more energy. But I mean, for us, we got, we got to do the same thing. Uh, we can't just be complacent with what we've done at home. We got to bring, bring even more energy on the road. So the Knicks will have to try to get their best to Julius Randle. He needs to get involved since the Hawks have contained him the entire series. One more win and the Hawks are moving on. Game five happens Wednesday in New York, but still no game time yet. All right, there you go. Hey, a popular Midtown restaurant shutting its doors after 30 years. We have details on the future of Einstein's. Beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications.
morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Well, a very popular Midtown Atlanta restaurant is now shutting its doors today after three decades. A restaurant executive tells 11 Alive high rises will go up in their spot on Juniper and 12th Streets really soon. 11 Alive Chanu Her explains what's next for Einstein's. I'm so sad that they're closing. Since his days in college, Ryan Sellers has been coming to Einstein's in Midtown Atlanta. And on its last day open, he's walking by one last time. It's, it's, it's historic. Like I said, I've been coming here for over 10 plus years. So to see that it's leaving to build some high rises, I mean, I'm kind of sad. But After 30 years here at the corner of 12th and Juniper, Einstein's will now make way for new high rises moving in. It'll look like this rendering published in the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Heather Watson, the director of sales, says some employees are moving on in their career while some are moving to other sister restaurants of Einstein's. But Einstein's future, it's up in the air. It hasn't been disclosed whether or not there'll be a spot in the new development or if um, we are going to carry on the Einstein's brand, but there's definitely a lot of ideas floating around, different conceptualized ideas. Marcus Merritt says he really hopes Einstein's will reopen, and same with Joe's on Juniper next door, which is also closing. I love that fact that we have a lot of establishments, especially LGBTQ establishments in the area. Um, so when I heard it, I was upset. But Watson says for those loyal customers who still want to spend some time at Einstein's before they're forever gone, there's still an opportunity. We will be here throughout the summer still as far as a place where you can book parties and things like that. 
Well, here we are at the end of May. June, of course, begins tomorrow, and uh, today's temperatures were actually a little bit below the average. We had some cooler air over us today with the northeasterly flow. We had that yesterday, too, below average temperatures and the day before, but now that's beginning to change as that east wind is going to break up. We'll have more of a southeasterly flow that'll start picking up a little more warm air, and we do think that tomorrow afternoon we'll make it back up into the 80s, most likely getting up to around 84 degrees in the afternoon hours, and as we continue through the next few days, we really don't see any big time changes in our temperatures. We're pretty much going to be holding in the low to mid 80s, not only for the end of the week, but into the weekend and also into next week. You don't see any big dips coming in from the north, cooling us off, as well as you don't really see any scorching air moving our way either. That really hot air is well out to the west, and it looks like that is going to stay there. And we're just going to have temperatures pretty much close to where we should be for this time of year. In fact, take a look at this graph and the white line shows where we see our average high for this time of year, which is 84. Tomorrow, we think we'll be right average at 84. Wednesday, still 84. And then a little bit below that on Thursday and Friday, but we're only talking by one or two degrees here. Saturday, right around 83 degrees for our high temperature. It is also a dry pattern now, but we're beginning to see some changes with that, especially as we go into the end of the week, as we first see a little more moisture coming in in the form of clouds and the humidity, and then eventually by Wednesday, you see a little bit more of this color getting into the uh, you know, yellows and greens here, showing where we have that little additional moisture. And on Wednesday afternoon, we're going to introduce a 20% chance for a shower. And then heading into Thursday, also on Friday, we're going to have about a 40% chance for some showers here. But it's not one of those situations where you know, it's an all day rain event raining all day. We're just talking about scattered showers that will develop here on Thursday afternoon and also Friday afternoon. Then into the weekend, more moisture down to the south, uh, central Georgia and in south Georgia, a little drier here, but we're going to go with about a 30% chance for a shower here for Saturday, Sunday, and also on Monday, just kind of like those uh, afternoon pop-up showers that will develop due to the heat and then uh, that humidity kind of mixing in too. So here you can see the reflection of that with those rain chances up to 20% on Wednesday. We think that'll be later in the day. And then Thursday and Friday, rain chances to 40%. It's more of that afternoon and evening variety. Then coming back down to Saturday and even into the weekend to 30%, just those few scattered showers that may develop because of that heat and then the additional humidity that's going to be moving our way too. So you see the temperature is pretty uniform, 84 Tuesday and Wednesday, then 82s and 83s really for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No rain in our area on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, the rain chance is really low at just 20%. Then on Thursday and Friday, about a 40% chance for some scattered showers, and then we'll keep it about a 30% chance Saturday, Sunday, and also on Monday. All right, thanks, Chris. You know, America is bouncing back. That was evident over the holiday weekend with beaches packed, businesses booming in some areas, and what traveler traveling experts think could be the busiest travel day in more than a year today. Tracy Potts has a look at how America is looking past the pandemic. Despite a washout in the Northeast, beaches across America were packed this weekend. Everybody's so excited to be out. Myrtle Beach brought in extra police to handle crowds. Hotels were predicted to be 80% full. I love it. I'm so glad we're almost back to normal. Holding up all four, Elio Castro Neves. In Indianapolis, the largest gathering in over a year, the Indy 500 with 135,000 people and COVID vaccine scenes on site. In Washington, thousands of motorcycles roared through the nation's capital. Rolling Thunder is back. Feels good. Crowds packed national parks and movie theaters as President Biden reminded the country why we commemorate Memorial Day. We only have one truly sacred obligation, and that's to equip those we send into harm's way with all they need. Flags at Arlington and other veteran cemeteries honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. We remember you and we want to celebrate you and we want to thank you more importantly. And today, five million passengers who've passed through airport security since Thursday head home. Officials say it could be the busiest travel day in over a year.
Still to come, a recent study is influencing how health experts say parents could help prevent food allergies in their children. We're going to break it all down for you next. A traffic, a few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta Roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. For Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to Today marks the last day of Food Allergy Awareness Month. Tracy Amick Pierce shows us how one Atlanta family is trying to help prevent f uh, children from develop developing them in the first place. Eight years ago, when JJ and Katherine Jackson's first child, Niall, was three, a walnut changed everything. Her eyes were swollen shut, she was covered in hives. Um, and it was terrifying. You always worry when they're out of your sight that they might accidentally eat something um, that could harm them. The guidance at the time was to avoid giving tree nuts and peanuts to babies. In 2015, the Jacksons had their third child, James, and a new study came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, which said, Introducing peanuts in the first year of life and keeping them in the diet until age five reduced peanut allergy risks in babies in the study by 86 percent. Food allergy dietitian Sherry Collins says that study helped change pediatric feeding guidelines around the world. Well, it's a huge deal. It's changed decades long thinking on feeding infants. You know. And now it's helped change the guidelines here in the U.S. Every five years, the USDA releases new guidelines on how Americans should eat. Now, in these latest guidelines, they included children under the age of two and how you should feed them to help prevent food allergies. According to the new guidelines, early introduction is crucial between four months and a year. Now, you should introduce all common food allergens when solid foods start, and consistency is key. Once you introduce an allergen, you need to maintain it. 
When it comes to peanuts, Colin says there are easy ways to introduce the allergen to infants. But you can start with just a little bit of peanut butter or powdered peanut butter and mix it with some warm water breast milk or formula and that makes a perfectly safe slurry for introducing peanut for example. To make peanut exposure even easier, last year the Jacksons reached out to the lead doctor in the LEAP study, Dr. Gideon Lack, to create preventative peanut puffs. Then during the pandemic, they donated them to food insecure families, raising awareness to help bring food allergy numbers down. And food is such an important part of how we all, you know, spend time together and, um, and to have fear um, in those moments where you're gathering with friends and with family um, is tough, um, especially for a little one. Jackson says she's glad to play a part in helping other families avoid peanut allergies. She just wishes this information would have been available when Niall was a baby. If there was anything that we could have done to prevent her from having a food allergy, we would have done it. All right, stick around. We got more news and weather coming up right here on the ATL. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive News Prime Time on the ATL starts now. Honoring the fallen this Memorial Day, how Metro Atlanta's remembrances of the brave who fought for our freedom are a little different this year. 
And new developments as Braves player Marcel Azuna makes his first court appearance after being arrested over the weekend. We're looking at what's next in this case. But first tonight in prime time, almost all COVID restrictions in tonight following an executive order from Governor Brian Kemp. There are a few statewide restrictions in place, but it's a big difference from where the state was just one year ago today. Hope for joining us now live in Atlanta to explain. Hope. Yeah, that's right. In May of 2020, cases were spiking just a few weeks after the statewide shelter in place ended. Now, COVID cases and hospitalizations are down, highlighting the 360 the state's done in 365 days. If we have large crowds that are out of control, um, we will take much stronger action than that. That was three days before Memorial Day in 2020. Governor Kemp had just signed an order increasing the number of gatherings allowed from 10 to 25. Bars and nightclubs were just given permission to reopen. Restaurants could increase capacity slightly and amateur sports as well as summer classes could return. Now on Memorial Day 2021, about one third of the state is vaccinated, although Georgia is still in the bottom for vaccinations in the country, worrying some health officials. As more and more mutations develop, they eventually have the possibility of overcoming those people or those communities that have been immunized. Still, Kemp moved to lift all COVID restrictions in the state. The only places with a few restrictions remaining are nursing homes, long-term care facilities, and schools. And on Kemp wanting to end mask mandates in schools. I think the time for mandates is over. The language in his new order doesn't outright ban masks in schools. Instead, it says school districts can't rely on the state of emergency to require face coverings, meaning school districts could still implement masks. They just can't say the government required them to do so. And Kemp's stance, as he told us in a press release, is that Georgia is doing well enough to end all government mandates. Of course, local businesses and organizations are free to do what they want in their places of business as it relates to restrictions. Now, health experts do continue to worry about more variants and continue to urge people to get a COVID shot. Hope, oh, thank you. Atlanta Braves outfielder Marcel Azuna is out of the Fulton County Jail tonight after prosecutors say he threatened to kill his wife. Police officers say when they arrived to the scene, they saw Azuna strangling her. A judge granting him bond, ordering him to have no contact with his wife. Our Joe Hinkey has more from that first hearing in court today. According to the warrant, the defendant did threaten to kill her and then proceeded to strangle her, such that the strangulation did not stop until um, officers with the Sandy Springs Police Department entered into the home. Fulton County it's prosecutors asked a judge to keep Marcelo Zuna in jail, given allegations from this past weekend and beyond. She has provided that there has been other instances of abuse in this case. While not reported, there were other instances of abuse. I'm going to set the bond at 20000 a Fulton County judge, though, granted Ozuna bond during this morning's hearing, where Ozuna sat silently and his attorney, Lars Anderson, spoke for him. Mr. Ozuna and his wife are married, and at best it is described as a toxic relationship. According to details released by Sandy Springs Police, a 911 call brought officers to Ozuna's home Saturday. They heard screaming, found a wide open front door, and witnessed Ozuna grabbing his wife by the neck. Police have also accused Ozuna of hitting his wife with his arm cast during that incident. Ozuna could be seen wearing his neon cast today after being injured last week during a game. It is why he stayed in Atlanta this weekend as the Braves traveled to New York. Anderson said the police report does not tell the whole story. There are other and additional facts which will come forward which will put this incident in a, uh, a more proper perspective. Azuna's attorney asked the judge to grant him bond and added the couple is working on a divorce. She has no objection and would like to have the father of her children released on some type of bond. Also advocating for Azuna's release, his wife through her attorney. My client has expressed that she has no imminent fear of death or bodily harm. She is currently in Miami-Dade County. You can see the full details of Azuna's arrest and charges right now on 11alive.com. Today, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris visited Arlington National Cemetery for the annual Memorial Day wreath laying. The president also delivering a message there saying our country can never repay the debt owed to someone who made the ultimate sacrifice. But Americans can honor them by fighting to preserve our democracy. The president also spoke about how this day impacts families across the country, including his own. Sunday marked the sixth anniversary of the death of his son, Bo, an Iraq war veteran. Yesterday marked the anniversary of his death. 
And it's a hard time, a hard time of year for me and our family, just like it is for so many of you. It can hurt to remember, but the hurt is how we feel and how we heal. The president also said we must honor their sacrifices by addressing the work needed as a nation to become fuller, freer, and more just. For many, the reasons for observing Memorial Day are deeply personal. This year is extra special for some because of the chance to honor our fallen servicemen and women in person and meet face, face to face with others who share similar experiences. 11 Alive's Chinu Her has more. In many different corners of the metro, people got together today to remember those who lost their lives serving our country. This year, people were able to get together in person after last year, many events were switched to virtual because of COVID-19. I actually was in the Air Force for 10 years and I was a fighter pilot. For Mike Reed, joining fellow Dunwoody neighbors to observe Memorial Day was a must. Doing something like this, like they're doing right now, does honor those who pay that sacrifice. And it also reminds us that there's a price to be paid. Mike was in the Air Force from 1980 until 1990. And in that time, he says he had to deliver heartbreaking news to families who lost loved ones, and he wasn't spared from loss either. Even uh, those, those were the Cold War years. We still had one or two people that we're very close to that uh, took off on a mission and uh, didn't come back. Across Metro Atlanta Monday, people joined similar Memorial Day events. In Decula, Juanita Jackson and her grandkids were thrilled to be at the town's parade this year in person versus last year when it was virtual. We did something at home that was sad because, you know, we had to stay inside. We couldn't be out. You know, like what we're doing right now. That's why I'm so excited about today. This is a great opportunity for the community to get together, right? And especially for an occasion like this, remembering the uh, fallen soldiers and veterans. Right? At Piedmont Park, the memory of 240 men from Fulton County killed in action during the Vietnam War will live on in a new monument going up in the near future. For Mike, whether it's done online or in person, what matters most is remembering. Being able to see this many people that support it this way tells you, it warms your heart that yes, they do get it. Meanwhile, our living veterans certainly remember their fallen friends and fellow service members. Doris Guzman, 101 years old, she was a nurse in the Navy and she lives in Metro Atlanta now. Well, today she wanted to pay her respects in person. 11 Alive photojournalist Aiden Brown was there when she did. Grand Dory, do you see all the flags? Well, I've been blessed with a healthy 101 year old veteran mama. And every year my daughter and I take her out to look at the flag. So today we came down to downtown Doraville so that she can see how communities memorialize her fellow veterans. Really? They didn't address your rank? You were an officer. Uh, we grew up hearing wonderful stories. I know my favorite, of course, is that she did march in President Roosevelt's funeral procession. So I hear about it through her and I share it with my daughter and I hope to extend that legacy through all the generations. Oh. When you were in the Navy, were those Air Force boys after those nurses? She's 101 and tough as nails. They don't make them like they make her anymore. <laughs> Dorothy McDougal, William Hopper, all a bunch of heroes. Doesn't matter what you do when people are watching, it matters how you are when people aren't there. And that's how we grew up. And I think that comes from having a, a Navy grandmother. <laughs> And take a look at this photo of Doris Guzman as a Navy nurse. Her family tells us she's still an avid reader, and they are pointing out that she doesn't even need her reading glasses. Well, we want to know who you are remembering and who you're honoring this Memorial Day. Share a photo with us. All you have to do is text your picture to the number on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. We'll be sharing your photos at 11 on Uplate on 11 Alive. So to come tonight, a local coffee shop was given federal funds to help it rebuild after suffering losses during the pandemic. How they're helping a special group find employment. Well, we started off the week with a dry weather conditions, a few clouds around at times, and we are tracking some rain that is out to the west. This eventually will make it our way. I'll let you know when to expect rain chances in the week ahead.
Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Tonight at 10, families are heartbroken after a wrong way crash ends with two men dead on Georgia 400. The fiery crash happening early Sunday morning. Investigators say the car that caused the crash was going more than 100 miles per hour. Our Natisha Lance spoke with some of the victim's loved ones. The family of 22 year old Tariq Kendall is in a deep state of despair. I miss him and I love him and I can't, I don't know how I'm going to live without him. They held tightly to one another while talking about their love and admiration for the Kennesaw State student. They say he loved music and like his idol Donald Glover, known as Childish Gambino, wanted to write uplifting stories to bring hope to the world. He was an evolved soul yes, he was. at 22 years old. He just walked. <laughs> Uh, in a state of grace and a state of love. Early Sunday morning, Tariq's mother followed his route home through an app. He was heading north on Georgia 400 at about 1.30 in the morning, five minutes away from home, when his movement stopped. She saw uh, that his car was stopped for 18 minutes on Georgia 400, and she rushed over there. Honestly, got there, and I almost just died on the scene. Outside on the scene, it ain't me. Deputies say another driver, 35 year old Silas Brown, was speeding down Georgia 400 in the wrong direction at more than 100 miles per hour. He crashed into Tariq head on. And the cars instantly burst into flames. Both men died at the scene. Friends of Brown say he'd only had the Alfa Romero car he crashed for about a week, but had no idea what could have led him to that crash. Silas was not a reckless person. Um, you know, I've been in the car with Silas before. He's not a reckless individual at all. Brown was known for being a popular hairstylist and for a short stint on a reality show. It's still very hard for me to process because he has so much good that he was working towards and working on. Tariq's loved ones say he too had so much more to accomplish. We're going to miss him, but we're going to carry him in our hearts. Almost half a million small business owners applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. $75 billion in COVID relief money earmarked for the hardest hit mom and pop businesses. One of the businesses to receive that assistance is a small coffee shop that employs adults with special needs. The owner tells our Caitlin Ross the money is helping them open a new location. The employees at Independent Grounds can't wait to get back to work. And thanks to this new federal grant, it won't be long before they do. I always say, Hi, welcome to Independent Grounds Cafe. Can I take your order? Drew Acre is happy to make anything you want, but he does have a specialty. Vanilla frappe. Ooh, what goes into that? Frappe mix, milk. Acre says he was the number one employee at Independent Grounds in Roswell when they had to close down because of COVID. I was completely devastated. And thanks to the pandemic, I've lost my job. Owner Lorna Hyde was devastated too. Independent Grounds was her dream. She says they were forced to close their Roswell location in March of last year. We were a coffee shop without a home. So, and then trying to find 
A new home during a pandemic is not the easiest thing in the world. She set her sights on building a new shop, but quickly got priced out. By February, when we finally got our building permit, construction prices had gone like through the roof, like $100,000 more. It's why she applied for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Without it, she's not sure they ever could have reopened. Corporations get bailed out all the time, but mom and pops, we're sometimes struggling. Banks don't, we're too small for banks to want to lend to us. Um, we may be a little too risky for other lending programs. She got $50,000 from the fund. She says that money will secure their future. Oh, thank God. It's good to be back at work. They're hoping to open in their new location in mid-June. Well, we have some pretty comfortable temperatures out there for you tonight. If you are out this evening, maybe cooking out or hanging out in the backyard with uh, some of your neighbors out there, it felt really comfortable. Now in town, we're still holding in the lower 70s here in Atlanta, also in Duluth. But outside the city, it is cooling down into the 60s right now. Athens, you're 65, Gainesville, 66. Carrollton, you're in the lower 60s right now at 63. We even have 60 in Blairsville, 59 right now in the mountains of North Georgia. So a nice, comfortable night out there with just a few clouds that are mixing in. Now heading out tomorrow morning. I know many of you will be going back to work tomorrow morning after today, the Memorial Day holiday, and the sun's going to come up tomorrow morning at 628 and it'll be mixing in with just a few clouds around temperatures in town here in the morning will be at about 60, but in the outlying areas we'll have some 50s around. So just know it's going to be another one of those refreshing mornings by eight o'clock driving into work. You'll be driving in with some sunshine, a few clouds mixing in temperatures up to 74 and then we jump up another 10 degrees between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning still with partly cloudy skies and those temperatures warming. Eventually we're going to get up into about uh, 84 degrees in the afternoon hours. That's going to be our high for the day and that's where we should be for this time of year. We're going to give that a 10 on the wasometer as we will see sunshine at times though mixing in with a few more clouds and uh, you know those clouds that we're not going to be giving us any rain. Here's what we're watching with our future radar showing that easterly flow tonight. Uh, tomorrow, a few of those clouds to start the day. We'll call it partly cloudy in the morning. Also at lunchtime tomorrow, maybe a few more clouds up in North Georgia to start the day tomorrow and then heading into Tuesday afternoon, we see more of a southeasterly flow trying to come in. That's why we think our high temperatures tomorrow are going to be a little bit warmer. Today's high was 80. We think it'll be 84 tomorrow. We don't expect any rain tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, additional clouds will be moving in, blocking out the sunshine a little bit more during the day Wednesday. And then later in the afternoon hours, that's when we think we'll see just about a 20% chance for an isolated shower to develop. Uh, most areas are going to be dry. You see these rain chances, you know, not really wide widespread or anything. Just that low rain chance is that moisture content in the air is going to start building up a little bit more and then heading into Thursday and Friday, our rain chances will go up a little bit more. Now we're going to see that humidity level start to rise the moisture content in the air as we go toward the end of the week and you can see those dew points in the 50s now, which is pretty comfortable air. But when those dew points move into the 60s, that's when it starts feeling a little more humid. We'll be feeling that for the end of the week and this also corresponds with those rain chances that are going to be coming up too. So we don't expect any rain here on Tuesday, but a few clouds up to 84 degrees, a few more clouds on Wednesday, also up to 84 degrees and a 20% chance for a shower, 40% chance for showers Thursday and Friday, and then back to a 30% chance Saturday, Sunday and Monday, not a you know all day rain event for the weekend or anything. Just a few of those afternoon pop up scattered showers. Take a look at your weather wow moment. This is from Carol Simmons at Grant Park said that she wanted to get out and do a little walk uh, for Memorial Day and just saw some beautiful scenery had to take a picture and post it on our page. Carol is part of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers. You can be a part of that group on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member. It's a closed group, but if you ask for membership and answer the membership questions, we'll let you in. And then you can see what type of weather pictures and videos and information people are posting from their, their neighborhood. And you can post your weather info there too. Chris, thank you. Well, the question had to come up sometime if you're fully vaccinated and your partner is not or vice versa. Is it safe to give them a kiss? A viewer wanted to know and we put our verified team on the case. Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you.
for storm trackers only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile. As more people get vaccinated, some couples are currently caught in a bit of a sticky situation where one partner is vaccinated and the other is not. And that can make sharing a kiss a little awkward. One Verify viewer asked about the risks of kissing when one person is vaccinated against COVID-19. Marianne Teal has the answer. Let's verify. Our sources, the Mayo Clinic, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Stuart Ray, professor at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Yes, you can spread it and yes, you can contract it, but the risk is a lot lower than it was before being vaccinated. And Dr. David Sullivan, a professor of molecular biology and immunology at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. So theoretically, yes, but the chances are low. A recent article from the Mayo Clinic confirms COVID-19 can be transmitted through kissing, stating coming into contact with a person spit through kissing or other sexual activities could expose you to the virus. And both doctors and the CDC agree. Even if you're vaccinated, you can still contract COVID-19. There is some residual risk of transmission. And as long as community rates are high, then I think we ought to exercise some caution. So we can verify this as true. It is possible for a vaccinated person to spread COVID-19 to an unvaccinated person through kissing. But according to both doctors, it has more to do with your proximity to each other than the actual kissing. Well, as always, if there's something you'd like for us to verify, all you have to do is send us an email. You can also text the word verify to the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. So to come tonight, a popular Midtown restaurant shutting its doors after 30 years. We have details on what's next and what's coming to the area. At 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. 
Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make a popular Midtown Atlanta restaurant closing its doors today after three decades. A restaurant executive telling us soon high rises will go up in their spot on Juniper and 12th. 11 Lives to New Her explains what's next for Einstein's. I'm so sad that they're closing. Since his days in college, Ryan Sellers has been coming to Einstein's in Midtown Atlanta. And on its last day open, he's walking by one last time. It's, it's, it's historic. Like I said, I've been coming here for over 10 plus years. So to see that it's leaving to build some high rises, I mean, I'm kind of sad. But After 30 years here at the corner of 12th and Juniper, Einstein's will now make way for new high rises moving in. It'll look like this rendering published in the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Heather Watson, the director of sales, says some employees are moving on in their career while some are moving to other sister restaurants of Einstein's. But Einstein's future, it's up in the air. It hasn't been disclosed whether or not there'll be a spot in the new development or if um, we are going to carry on the Einstein's brand. But there's definitely a lot of ideas floating around, different conceptualized ideas. Marcus Merritt says he really hopes Einstein's will reopen and same with Joe's on Juniper next door, which is also closing. I love that fact that we have a lot of establishments, especially LGBTQ establishments in the area. Um, so when I heard it, I was upset. But Watson says for those loyal customers who still want to spend some time at Einstein's before they're forever gone, there's still an opportunity. We will be here throughout the summer still as far as a place where you can book parties and things like that. Vietnamese authorities have announced they have found a new coronavirus variant. That's one of three COVID headlines we're tracking for you tonight. The new variant is a hybrid of strains first found in the UK and India. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has doubled in Vietnam in the last few weeks, possibly because of that new variant. 
Mass vaccinations are underway in the country right now. Vietnam's health minister said the newly discovered variant might be more transmissible than other versions. Tonight, the federal government says employers can legally offer incentives or rewards for getting the COVID-19 vaccine. The Equal Opportunity Employment Commission says incentives are allowed as long as employers don't tell you get it or you're fired or make the incentives too big. There are only two exemptions that companies must allow for. That's a disability or religious reasons. And it's the final week of vaccinations over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The walk-up vaccination site will reopen tomorrow through Monday, June 7th. It opened until 6.30 most days, but on Wednesday it'll be open late and close at 9 p.m. On Memorial Day, President Joe Biden is looking ahead to his July 4th vaccination goal of getting at least 70% of adults with at least one coronavirus vaccination shot. But there's also a new deadline. He has given the intelligence community 90 days to report on the origins of COVID-19. Tonight, we're exploring why health experts say knowing where it started is crucial to preventing another pandemic. Understanding where COVID-19 came from. It's absolutely essential. <laughs> It informs how we go forward and how we prepare ourselves against these threats in the future and reduce these likelihoods. Did it come from an animal in the wild or from one of China's wet markets or from a lab like Wuhan's Institute of Virology, where researchers were looking at bat virus mutations? These doctors say getting an answer is critical if it's from a lab. It's going to affect how we respond to this. We, we're going to need to focus on trying to get better controls and this sort of high risk research going forward. And there's the fear that history will repeat itself. Mother Nature is telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be COVID-26 and COVID-32 unless we fully understand the origins of COVID-19. COVID-19. President Joe Biden ordered the intelligence community to redouble its efforts in investigating the origins with a top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee alleging this about the lab leak this theory. This is the worst uh, cover up in human history uh, that we've seen resulting in 3.5 million deaths. There's still no evidence, which is why there are calls for an outbreak investigation in China. But at this point, China is refusing full access to the lab and its records. For the latest on the number of COVID cases, deaths, and hospitalizations in your community, head over to 11alive.com. You can also find trends in your area there as well. Today, a remembrance ceremony was held in Tulsa, Oklahoma, marking the centennial of the 2000, excuse me, of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. Survivor Viola Fletcher, who is 107 years old, was among those in attendance. It was 100 years ago today that a mob of white people laid waste to the Greenwood community, leaving hundreds of black residents dead. The mob also burned businesses, schools, and homes. Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson spoke at the event, calling for an end to racism. We all have to work together to cure the sickness that ails us as a nation. And that sickness is called racism. It's at our core, it's in the soil. We must acknowledge it and root it out. And so this event today, right here, this is ground zero for human rights. The attacks lasted for two days, and until recently, the massacre was hardly recognized and was largely unknown to many Americans. Memorial Day, a chance to honor the U.S. service members who lost their lives for our country. One retired soldier is marking the holiday by bringing awareness to the mental health struggles many of our veterans face. So today, let's take a moment to be mindful about other people's journeys and how healing happens one step at a time. Every journey starts with a step. These first couple of steps mean everything. And so I hope all y'all that are out there, I hope you start your journey as well. Meet me on mine. We caught up with Greg C. Washington about 640,000 steps into his. Look, I'm a, I'm a little over 320 miles into this thing. Your feet have to be so tired. And look, you get to walk with me as I crossed the Alabama state line. <laughs> Yay! After serving abroad and working in the corporate world, this retired combat veteran is on a new mission to walk 1,800 miles from Mississippi to New York, ending up at West Point, 
his alma mater. Good morning. It is day 27 of a walk to honor. Walking on the side of the road through 11 states, stopping in 25 cities to hold mental health rallies along the way. I was like, there are a lot of people out here suffering in silence just like I am. The latest VA report shows nearly 18 veterans die by suicide every day. Many suspect the pandemic has made it worse. Greg says he was almost one of them. In my darkest hour, I was dealing with grief. I was dealing with trauma and depression. I had sustained injuries myself while I was deployed. I lost my two best friends. Emily Perez and Scotty Pace. And so I had survivor's remorse. And if it wasn't for my baby cousin, she was 13, 14 at the time, calling me in my darkest hour and just checking in on me, I might not be here. So he started walking. Hey, hey, good people. It's day 21 of the walk to honor. For those who no longer can and for those who need help taking that first step. This whole message is to just let people know that one suicide is not the way. And the call to action is to start your own personal journey of healing. That was Chris C. Diaz reporting. Greg is coming straight through Atlanta. He's holding a rally at the red, white and blue facility on June 5th. We did the math and by the time he gets to New York, Greg will have taken more than 3.6 million steps on his journey. We are 53 days away from the Tokyo Olympic Games, and this athlete is showing us what it takes to persevere through the most trying time of his life. Five time Olympic gold medalist Nathan Adrian was just married and preparing to qualify for his fourth Olympic team when a cancer diagnosis threw, uh, diagnosis threw his life into turmoil. But like any great swimmer, he dove right in for the fight. When you get a cancer diagnosis, the hardest thing is that through my entire life, and it's definitely been taught through sport, through swimming, you have the ability to control some things. Here, you just have to kind of throw your hands up and you have no idea what's going on. It was really impressive to, to see how he handled you know, the worst news of his life. It really was a life or death situation, and for him to be able to stay positive and pick me up just as much as I was picking him up, I think is a really special characteristic. What a comeback story. With cancer and, and my cancer specifically, I'm still going through it. You know, there's still a chance that it'll come back. But that moment that I got to jump in the water, I do get to forget about it. I get to focus on what I'm passionate about. It feels like home. Swimming just has a way of kind of sucking you in. It's a game, and you want to go as fast as you can possibly go. And I'm just not done yet. Gold medalists and Olympic champions, United States of America. We have had some dry weather for a few days, but things are about to change with not only an increase in the humidity and clouds, but eventually we will see our rain chances going up a little bit more. We'll talk more about that and the timing coming up. The Braves start their series against the Nationals out at Truist Park. One Brave player just climbed to the top of Major League Baseball charts in home runs. That's next. Speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs>
Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. For Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Today marks the last day of Food Allergy Awareness Month. Roughly 32 million Americans have food allergies. It's a potentially deadly reaction to certain foods, but new federal guidelines could help lower that number. Tracy Amick Pierce shows us how one Atlanta family is trying to help prevent children from developing these allergies in the first place. Eight years ago, when JJ and Katherine Jackson's first child, Niall, was three, a walnut changed everything. Her eyes were swollen shut, she was covered in hives, um, and it was terrifying. You always worry when they're out of your sight that they might accidentally eat something um, that could harm them. The guidance at the time was to avoid giving tree nuts and peanuts to babies. In 2015, the Jacksons had their third child, James, and a new study came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, which said, Introducing peanuts in the first year of life and keeping them in the diet until age five reduced peanut allergy risks in babies in the study by 86%. Food allergy dietitian Sherry Collins says that study helped change pediatric feeding guidelines around the world. Well, it's a huge deal. It's changed decades long thinking on feeding infants. And now it's helped change the guidelines here in the U.S. Every five years, the USDA releases new guidelines on how Americans should eat. Now, in these latest guidelines, they included children under the age of two and how you should feed them to help prevent food allergies. According to the new guidelines, early introduction is crucial between four months and a year. Now, you should introduce all common food allergens when solid foods start, and consistency is key. Once you introduce an allergen, you need to maintain it. When it comes to peanuts, Colin says there are easy ways to introduce the allergen to infants. But you can start with just a little bit of peanut butter or powdered peanut butter and mix it with some warm water, breast milk or formula, and that makes a perfectly safe slurry for introducing peanut, for example. To make peanut exposure even easier, last year, the Jacksons reached out to the lead doctor in the LEAP study, Dr. Gideon Lack, to create preventative peanut puffs. Then, during the pandemic, they donated them to food and secure families, raising awareness to help bring food allergy numbers down. And food is such an important part of how we all, you know, spend time together and, um, and to have fear um, in those moments where you're gathering with friends and with family um, is tough, um, especially for a little one. Jackson says she's glad to play a part in helping other families avoid peanut allergies. She just wishes this information would have been available when Niall was a baby. 
if there was anything that we could have done to prevent her from having a food allergy, we would have done it. Congress passed a resolution last week declaring May 28th as National Food Allergy Prevention Awareness Day. Tonight, Johnson & Johnson is asking the Supreme Court to review a verdict that would force them to pay out $2 billion. The case is in favor of women who claim they developed ovarian cancer from using the Johnson & Johnson talc products. That's one of three big global stories that we are following for you tonight. The Supreme Court could decide as soon as tomorrow whether it will get involved in the case. Johnson & Johnson argues the company didn't get a fair shake in a trial in Missouri. The company says its baby powder doesn't cause cancer and isn't contaminated by asbestos, but the disputed link between cancer and talc is not really part of the Supreme Court's case. Johnson & Johnson says it shouldn't have been forced to defend itself in one trial involving claims by women from 12 states, women who have different backgrounds and histories of using products with talc. Investigators have arrested a man accused of plotting a mass shooting at a Walmart. It happened in Kerr County, Texas, about 50 miles northwest of San Antonio. 28-year-old Coleman Thomas Blevins is charged with making a terroristic threat. Investigators say they intercepted a message from him indicating he was, quote, preparing to proceed with a mass shooting and that the threat included Walmart. Authorities found guns, ammunition, and what they called radical ideology paraphernalia inside of his home. Blevins is being held on a $250,000 bond. China says it will now allow couples to have up to three children. This comes after census data shows a steep decline in birth rates. China ended its decades-old one-child policy in 2016. It then imposed a two-child limit, but the birth rate still didn't go up. The cost of raising children in cities has deterred many Chinese couples from expanding their families. We actually made it up to 80 degrees this afternoon for our high temperature. Uh, we should be around 84 for this time of year at the end of May to the beginning of June. So we were about four degrees below the average this afternoon. We were also below average this morning too with our high temperature that made it or low temperature that made it down to 59. We should be around 65 for a morning temperature on average for this time of year. Now we still have not picked up any rain out there for today. Our uh, deficit is right at about an inch and a quarter below where we should be for this time of year. That deficit is going to rise a little bit tomorrow. And then as we go toward the middle and especially the end of the week, we'll begin to see a, a few more scattered showers that are going to develop here. Now, I mentioned that that temperature today was below the average. That cooler air that we've had with us over the past few days is moving up toward the north. And as it does, it's going to be replaced by warmer air. So whereas today we're about four degrees below average, we do think tomorrow we're going to be really closer to average with highs around 83, 84 degrees in the afternoon. And this warmer air pretty much stays with us over the next few days. We really don't see any surges of cold air coming our way. We also don't have any real surges of warm air coming in either. That pretty much stays out to the west where you see those oranges. It's going to be a lot uh, warmer out into parts of Colorado and even into Idaho than it is here where we're going to be seeing those temperatures that are uh, going to be pretty much holding in the low and mid 80s for the entire week ahead. But by the end of the week, we're also going to see our rain chances that are going to be coming up a little bit more and that's going to just be just scattered showers into the weekend and also into next week. So as I mentioned, the average high for this time of year is 84. That's shown here by this white line we will be at average Tuesday and Wednesday and then just a little bit below average Thursday and Friday and Saturday just by a couple degrees. We're talking 82, 83 degrees. Now we also are going to be dry, dry air in place over us right now. I want you to notice though the colors beginning to change a little bit tomorrow as we start to see a little more moisture coming in, mainly in the form of a few more clouds. Relative humidity levels start coming up a little bit and then heading into Wednesday, humidity levels up a little bit more. We're going to go with about a 20% chance for a shower and then on Thursday and Friday, we've got about a 40% chance for scattered showers here. And then Saturday, uh, that goes down to about a 30% chance into the weekend. So just know that really there's not going to be one day this week that's a, you know, a rain out or anything like that. We're just talking about these scattered afternoon showers that are going to be a little more prevalent here Thursday and Friday. And then just some isolated showers, we think, for the afternoon hours into the weekend and beginning of next week. We don't expect any rain tomorrow. High temperatures right around 84 degrees. Then there's that 20% chance for a shower Wednesday up to a 40% chance Thursday and Friday, and then a 30% chance for just a few of those isolated afternoon pop-up showers Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with high temperatures in the low and mid 80s. 
So the Braves are home all week with two very important stretches against the Nationals and the Dodgers. The importance of this guy, though, Ronald Acuna Jr. to this everyday lineup, that is unmatched. More on Ronnie in a second, but first at Truist Park, a flyover for those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. A beautiful day out there today. Bottom of the first, William Contreras dropping a nice little ball into the left field to come across the plate for a 3-1 lead. Then bottom of the second, here he is, Ronald Acuna Jr. going yard for his 16th dinger of of the year Atlanta winning five to three and Acuna now tied on top of the major league standings for most home runs this season. Bueno, no, no, no. Yo solamente salgo a disfrutar mi juego y a salir. I try not to think about it. I'm not focused on it. I just try to go out there, play my game, and contribute to the team any way that I can. And we are who we are. So you know, the guys we're going out there every day are the same guys we're going out. So I think we just got to kind of focus on, like I've said before, just doing our job, you know, keeping the intensity and the focus up and just trying to win the baseball games. Now, listen, it's not all dingers and ribbies for Atlanta. With Marcelo Zuna's arrest over the weekend, this club now has off-field issues to worry about. Manager Brian Snicker was asked today how the team is dealing with it. Well, it's some things that we're dealing with that probably a lot of us never have. I haven't dealt with some of the things that we're we're dealing with right now and but that's you know the good thing about baseball is you have another game the next day that you can focus on and keep get your energies towards that end. Georgia Tech baseball's road to Omaha will start in Music City. The 17th ranked Yellow Jackets are in the two seed in the Nashville Regional. They're going to start play with Indiana State on Friday. You have to earn your way into this tournament. They don't uh, just give anything to you so we're excited about being uh, selected, first of all. Definitely a great challenge going there to win a regional at Vandy, but now we just got to start our preparation. The Hawks took a commanding 3-1 series lead over the Knicks on Sunday with a chance to move on when they play in New York on Wednesday night. This series has shown a lot of things. It's shown that Atlanta has depth and also their ability to make a postseason statement. It has also been a series where tensions are running pretty high. Flagrants running rampant and New York's Reggie Bullock, he started some drama in Game 4. Trey Young has been dubbed the villain in New York. He also said he doesn't really care for all that extra nonsense. I don't care if they're in the feelings of who's mad or who's nice basketball at the end of the day and we're just trying to we're just trying to win. I mean I I mean all the extra extra stuff it is what it is and we're locked in and uh, we're focused on focused on us and we're trying to trying to win the game. Wednesday is going to be crazy can't wait. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick. Open your phone camera right now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. 
Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta Roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> We're going to see temperatures tomorrow a little warmer than they were today, getting up to about 84 degrees in the afternoon uh, with uh, partly cloudy skies. A few more clouds on Wednesday, still 84, and then we'll introduce a 20% chance for a shower. As we head into the end of the week on Thursday and Friday, the rain chance is going to go up a little bit more to 40%, and then just a 30% chance for some of those scattered showers, mainly that afternoon and evening variety for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with high temperatures in the low and some mid 80s. All right, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for spending your evening here on 11 Alive News Primetime. Switch over right now to 11 Alive. We are getting ready for up late. Thanks so much again for being with us. Have a great night. Some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick. Open your phone camera right now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs>